Emily, congratulations on second year in a row making it to the CrossFit Games. Thank the you. the qualification process for you, I think, is is a really interesting one because you are one of those athletes that has taken the sanctional system to task and just sure. been like, you know what? I'm going to use this to my advantage. You qualified last year nearly at the very last second by taking yeah. the Granite <laughs> Games spot. And this year it's a little bit earlier. So your, your, your season is probably going to be a little bit more relaxed, a little bit better in, yeah. in terms of training sessions. But you know, what was there, was there like this moment of planning of knowing like, okay, the sanctionals are going to be a really good opportunity for me. And I got to pick and choose my battles or like, you know, how was your approach for, for the, the change in the season to actually make it to the games like this? Yeah. So I think last year was kind of, I mean, everyone didn't really know what was going on last year. It was kind of a, guinea pig year so I just uh yeah actually skipped out on the open last year and thought oh I'll just go to a sanction I'll see what happens so it was kind of uh wasn't really planned (laughs) and then this year obviously I planned to make the games and um didn't typically I don't do super well in the open I'm just uh more of a competition live competition type athlete so I had a couple backup competitions planned um, if I didn't qualify through the Open. So uh, Dubai was the first one, and then I think I missed it by just Sam got it before me, um, Sam Briggs. And then, yeah, Wadapalooza, and obviously the sooner you get it, the better. So you can spend the, the next part of the season just training for the games, which is yeah, that'll be good. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, getting the getting the qualification in the first half of the season is is one of those big advantages that I think Mm -hmm. might be overlooked or understated when people look at how the season is built out. Because at this point, I mean, you have March, April, May, June, and all of July. So you have full five months to sort Mm -hmm. of come off of whatever crazy training you you're doing in the, in the, over the holidays and going into Wadapalooza and ramp back into building like, you know, the big base for, for you to be able to peek into, into the games. Totally. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So last year I had probably a month to trade for the games and this year I've got five times that. So yeah. So, so now instead of just one first place finish, you're going to have five first place finishes, right? That's how the math works that's out. The plan. Yeah. Yeah. Five times. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking, cause that's funny. Cause I was, I was going to go there. I was, I was looking at your, your scores from last year's game. So you placed 18th, which is a mm-hmm. pretty solid showing for your rookie year. Like mm-hmm. really, really decent way of showing up, but it, it wasn't even an 18th where it was a bunch of consistent performances. It was, you won, you won the ruck event. So you were the best in the field at one of the toughest events. And then you were top 10, I think in at least the, the sprint couplet, which was the sled yeah. and the bar muscle up one. Right. Yeah, I think so. So do you, and then, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and then I think the hands down walk one, I was top 15 for sure. So does that I did have one rough the, the first event was super rough. Like I failed I think three rope climbs in a row. <laughs> um barely made that first cut. I think I was 50 something. So that was a bit of a stressful start and I think I was just fighting back from that event there on. Yeah. Do, is there is there so that's interesting because your weekend didn't start super hot at the games last year, but you had some really big flashy performances in there. Does that, does that help the confidence? Does that give you something else to like sort of think about or train for or plan around? Or are you just like, all right, thank God that was out of the way. Now I can actually get out of here and have a good time. No, I actually, when that event was announced, I was like, sweet, like I'll be good at that. <laughs> like I totally, I don't know. I don't know if I just got a little shell shocked and, uh, yeah, didn't um, trust my body enough and jumped up to the rope too soon. Or I mean, you can armchair quarterback so much, but I think it worked out. It gave me fire going into the next bit. So the, the reason uh, why. <laughs> yeah, the the talk talk to me a little bit about that fire, right? Because that that sort of seems to have carried over not just through the games last year, where you were able to turn it around and have a bunch of really good performances, but mm-hmm. also you know you did pretty well in the open this year. I think you were right around the top 100 if I'm if I'm not mistaken. There is, yeah. Somewhere around there. And also basically within within fighting distance of qualifying out of Dubai, which is one of the hardest mm-hmm. sanctionals to do it, and you made it in Wadapalooza, which is another super tough sanctional to do it. So clearly that has kind of carried over like the the confidence from a performance at the games last year has kind of carried over. Is there was that like a conscious thing or or is you just, are you just kind of vibing off that off that experience? 
Yeah, I think more more so than that. I mean, the first time you're competing with all these girls that you've looked up to, you're kind of like, huh. <laughs> and then once you do it and you beat them, you're like, okay, like I belong here. <laughs> and then yeah, from then on. The it's kinda, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say, um, it's funny. I was telling my husband like last year this time, I didn't even do the open because I was like, I'm not at that level. I'm not gonna make the games. Like, let's just do a sanctional for fun. Like, and it's crazy what a year, what a difference a year can make where my mindset is and my performance. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, I think a lot of people, fans especially kind of get this, like, uh, this, they, they put, they put a lot of athletes on a pedestal. They think there's like, oh, there's nothing that they can be bad at, or there's nothing they'll, they'll lose at, or, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it's, it's much, uh, it's a much bigger gap for someone like, you know, who's, who's just a fan of the sport or a spectator to see and try and compare themselves to where the other athletes are, like where games athletes are. And I wonder, is there, is there a certain type of competitive moment? Like, do you remember a moment in which you looked over and you saw like a legend and you were like, I'm going to, I'm going to beat you in this workout and it's going to feel real, real nice. (laughs) Um, you know, I can't remember a specific moment. I remember the moment, like, I walked into the games and I saw, like, I walked into the warm-up hall and I saw, like, Sam Briggs and, like, Katrin and I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, <laughs> I was competing with them, like, at a minor little panic and then, uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta switch that around or else you're gonna be shell-shocked the whole time and not do as well as you can. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Uh, do you, uh, you mentioned that you have, you have the sniffles and that you work in, in a hospital. Uh, yeah. do you, you know, obviously no one can take this as professional medical advice, but mm-hmm. you know, how do you, how are you feeling about the whole coronavirus thing? We're taking a real left turn here. We're yeah, taking yeah. a real left turn. Uh, I think it's way over, uh, everyone's panicking way too much than they need to be <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I was looking at the stats, I think, like SARS, bird flu, H1N1, like they all had so many more deaths, so many more, like um, coronavirus is nothing, nothing in comparison, but get your toilet paper, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I keep hearing people hoarding toilet paper and I'm not 100% sure I understand the, the thought I, process behind that. I know. I'm like, do they know Save on Foods delivers? Like, <laughs> 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 you really need it. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, yeah, you start just relying on you can like Uber eats yourself everything you need to eat. You can you know really? Amazon Prime yourself everything else. Oh, like, yeah. I don't know what else there is to worry about. Uh, your <laughs> your competition season upcoming. Mm-hmm. You know, the, you like we said, you have five months between now and the games. You know what what do you okay. have? Uh, what do you have on the docket? What are you looking at? So funny you ask. Uh, so I'm actually meant to be competing next weekend at Atlas Games. And then directly the weekend after at West Coast. <laughs> a, um, nice, a nice easy deload in March. That's good. I know. So at the time, it was a great idea. <laughs> um, I think I kind of just thought um, I need as many tra- chances as I can to make the games and do it while you're hot kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> if, if I mean, it, it took me quite a while to recover from Wadapalooza. So I don't know if that was just the type of competition was pretty rough or I don't know. I took a week off and went to Disney world, like wasn't eating as well as I should have been. Like, I don't know, but yeah, it took me a good couple weeks. So now I'm thinking, well, I don't know. I'm definitely not going to be at a hundred percent at West coast. So we'll see. We'll, we'll go day by day and see what we're going to do here. The, uh, the, the, the programming at Wadapalooza, did you feel like your legs were super toasted after, after it was all over? Oh yeah. I mean, that yeah, was like after the second day, it's those air squats. They get you every time, <laughs> every time, squats. Yeah. every time. And then within a day or two afterwards, you guys had to work out with like 160 pistols, which definitely doesn't help, help the, the situation there. Yeah. I, I, I think people underestimate sometimes the, uh, just the, the havoc that, that high volume air squats, like Tabata air squats even can put on, put think, on the like, body. I practiced that workout at my gym, like so many times and yeah 300 air squats whatever never sore but you just go that one percent faster when you're competing and that's what does it (laughs) yeah that'll make the difference uh so i actually i'm gonna be at both atlas games and west coast classic so we'll be running into each other internationally over the next couple weeks yeah 
I, so you, we've got the same travel itinerary. <laughs> we do, we do. And you know what? I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that my job is not as hard as yours. So I'm going to give myself a pat on the back of of being yeah. at these different events, even though I'm not exercising really hard while I'm there. It's hard to recover <laughs> and go again in another four days. Like, yeah, that trip. I I'm, I wonder. You know, that's it's not the type of skill set that you sort of develop or practice very very consistently because not a lot of people are doing those back-to-back weekend competitions, but like, you know, how are you going to try and, you know, pull it together with such a, such a quick turnaround? Good question. (laughs) Just, yeah, (laughs) really focus on my recovery, my nutrition. Um, I can't be training much in that week in between, obviously, uh, just trying to recover. And I mean, my goals going into Atlas and West coast are obviously different now, now that I've got my ticket. Um, we might take it as an opportunity to just try some new strategies and competition and have a little more fun. Um, I was thinking back like the last, a lot of competitions I've done, there's been so much riding on it that they've been quite stressful. So now it's kind of like, Oh, pressure's off. Maybe just have some fun and, you know, go into West coast knowing um, that, yeah, maybe I'm not a hundred percent. So if I could still be decent, then look what I can do when I'm well rested and hundred percent. Do you have, um, do you have, do you have, you know, sort of similarly leveled, uh, training partners or people that you're, you're working out with or competing with regularly? So do you train solo most of the time? I do. Yeah. Wow. And is so, that like garage or at a gym or what? So it's both. So usually one session is in my garage and, um, it's not even a garage. It's like a parking stall. <laughs> and it's a sweet setup and and then my other session is at my gym um yeah usually I'm always by myself sometimes I'll rope one of the guys from my gym into a workout but nobody is uh really at my level to compete yeah with. yeah after like yeah. the eighth or ninth time that you just you just grind them into dust they 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 always have to I be know. busy they always are suddenly yeah. busy when you come into the gym Totally. Yeah. I got to rotate through them. Keep them, keep them sweet. <laughs> uh, where, where are you by the way? I, I know that you're in Canada, but I don't know where in Canada you are. So Vancouver. West okay. Island. You're on the West coast. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. actually do have to travel out to Montreal to get there. It's not like a, you're not going to be, yeah. you're not going to be close. Yeah. You're, no, you're basically like traveling. Yeah. You're traveling as much, if not more than I am to get there from Texas. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you're you're really putting in some miles. Like, do you see yourself actually continuing that? Like, are you gonna are you gonna try and defend the Granite Games title later this season? Are you gonna try and make it out to any of the other events? Or are you are you gonna lay low after this? I'm gonna lay low for a little bit for sure. Um, I have been thinking about Granite Games. I mean, I really enjoyed that competition, so we'll see what happens there. But um, yeah, for sure, gotta just hunker down and train for a few months. I mean, competition is fun, but you're not really getting better if you're competing all the time. Yeah. Um, another just quick, we're doing left turns all over the place here. We'll eventually get sure. back to back to, get back to the thread, but I'm curious, you know, looking at the, the leaderboard you've been, and you've been, you've been doing this competitively for, uh, you know, a few years at this point, like you've been, you've mm-hmm. been in the game for a while. So, you know, what's going on, you know, who the competitors are, you know, how things kind of shake out in the, in the competition scene, you know, Iceland gets a lot of, a lot of attention because of the daughters, like they're Mm -hmm. exceptionally good at CrossFit. They've been at the top of the game for a long time, but I I think in a, in a strange way, Canada is under appreciated for how many good Canadians there are who compete at high levels in the CrossFit games, both the men's and the women's side. I mean, is Mm -hmm. there, is there like a national pride that you have of being like, yeah, like this, these are our people. Like we're, we're going to like fly under the radar and very politely beat everybody else at nearly everything. (laughs) And then say sorry. <laughs> and then say and then apologize. Apologize. Yeah. I, I'm sorry you had to eat my dust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that you say it, I I mean, I think it's just cooler because there's fewer of us. So we kind of stick out. Um, whereas like the US, like there's so many good people. You know, you guys have so many like, so you're not, you don't stick out as much. But um, yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Is there... I think we kind of have a, like I've gotten really close with Velma and Fikowski and I don't know, they're from BC too. So we're actually, we live pretty close, which uh, is kind of cool. They've really helped me because they have a lot more experience than I do. And they've been around a lot longer. 
Yeah, that's that, that's what I was going to ask. I was like, is there is there a, a crew that you've developed? You know, like a maple leaf crew that you've de- developed up there that you like kind of you know bounce ideas off of. And mentioning Pat and Brent, I mean, those are they've done okay. You know, they they've done oh, they've yeah. done pretty well on their own. So so it seems like it yeah, seems like that's a cool crew. Yeah, they're like every time I have a question or whatever, I'll just message them. Like before Wadapalooza, I was having issues with that um, backpack muscle up. Like, just couldn't do it. <laughs> and so I messaged Belner, and he's like, oh, well, of course, he's super good at muscle-ups, so he thinks it's easy. <laughs> and then I messaged Fikowski, and he's like, yeah, like, I tried it, couldn't do it either. Like, so I can relate to one of them usually. And then they, they have really good banter. Fikowski will be like, ah, like, whatever. He doesn't know what he's talking about kind of thing. But, yeah, all, all good jokes. They're good. They're good guys for sure that's uh yeah that, that's a that's a good crap I'm, I'm very lucky in that i've gotten a chance to spend you know probably an outsized amount of time with both those guys and mm. each time i get to spend time with them i'm always like god why like you guys are really well known but why aren't you even better known in the space because they all ha- they have so much so many interesting things and neither of them takes it like um you know they take it very seriously obviously but they have a great time with it. Whereas I feel like a lot of the other athletes kind of come across as a little bit wooden, maybe like a little bit too stiff. Uh, Pat and yeah. Brent seem to have a good time, which is, yeah, I mean, oh, the all in totally. series, for example, is a really good, yeah. is a really good show of like, you know, what they've, what their personalities are like. Um, yeah. But yeah I'm excited. Th- We're actually doing that. Uh, the next episode, I guess is going to be us three. Yeah. Year, I, so. I've, yeah. I've heard, I've heard that you are, you're being, you're being added into, uh, added into the crew. Are you yeah. are you gonna bring the average up? I mean, it seems like both Pat and Brent didn't have a good time last year, you know, and maybe <laughs> working together with a new a new partner in, in crime and like the the crew is gonna help help the performance of the all in <laughs> curse. Yeah, you know? maybe. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, that's funny. You should you should mention that because I've been talking to uh, I've been talking to the crew as well about you know sort of helping out a little bit with that when uh, when we're all in Del Mar, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, I loved getting a chance to help last year with, with the episodes they do with the Pat, but you know, I'm curious what, what was the process like for you, you know, getting sort of re- like drafted into that or recruited into, into looking look, like being a part of that in any way? Um, not so much of a process. Uh, Brent just messaged me one day. He's like, Hey, like he's so nonchalant. I got a guy like he does this. <laughs> <laughs> like I mentioned your name, like blah blah blah. He might contact you. Here's his email. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then yeah, Tyler uh I think emailed me and then called and then yeah, I was like, sweet, okay. <laughs> hey, do you know what do you know whether they've come up with a title yet? Have they have they told you whether they've they've figured out a title or not? I know nothing. No? Damn. All right. Just, so I've been No. I just signed myself up and I was like, That sounds fun. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I I've been I've been Probably uh, they are they're very annoyed with me, but I've been throwing titles at them constantly, <laughs> just hoping that one of them sticks. Uh, but I I don't know I don't know whether they figured one out yet or not. Um, what were the but, first two? Uh, the first one was all in, and then the other one was all in two, as in T O O, like as well. Yeah. So I don't know what all in like all in three, all er in more all in, or one hundred ten percent. It's gotta be, it's gotta be something tongue in cheek like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Those, those, uh, those documentaries are a lot of fun to watch and those re- they're really funny. They're really well made. And, uh, I'm actually really excited that, that they're adding in new blood this year. You know, it's really cool to see what they did with like Brent and Pat, but I think you being involved is going to be really interesting as well. I think, yeah. And my, like my story is a little bit different than theirs and I'm a girl, so that might, that's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think even, even just the, sim- the, the simple fact that you're competing against a different field mm-hmm. is going to be interesting. Not to mention the fact that you have a totally different story, different background, a little bit like you know, different personality, different little like tweaks to, to the humor that they already bring. I think all those things are, are hugely positive for a storytelling perspective. Yeah, should be good. Do you have, uh, uh, you know, do you have something this season like? 
that you're most looking forward to? I mean, now that you, you got you got your qualification, so the stress is kind of off. Is there like a you know, redemption at the games that you're looking for? Like, you know what? I can't wait for rope climbs, legless rope climbs to show up again. I'm just going to murder everybody at them. Or, or is there something like that that you have kind of, you know, taped to your mirror, <laughs> on your bathroom uh-huh. mirror you see every day? I think, well, up to Wadapalooza, it was just kind of like, get back there first. And then I'll worry about, so I'm still kind of, um, okay, check, that's done. And then now I'm like, oh, what am I doing these next few weeks with these sanctionals? I think, I think once West Coast is done and I have a chance to chill out and start training again, then we can ramp it up. And <laughs> But I think now I'm just in a bit of a, yeah, it's like it's a, a tornado. Travel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh I can imagine like trying to keep your head above water right now as you're as you're traveling a ton is going to be the biggest goal. And then you can actually, you know, relax and and get your head right for what the games are going to look like um this year more than anything, you know, once mm-hmm. once everything slows down over the next couple of weeks for you. And once you know right. cor- coronavirus you really just starts wiping out all your competition, you'll be fine. <laughs> It's going to be, there you go. it's going to make the competition way better when it's just you and like two other people showing up to compete. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope it doesn't wipe out me first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're, you, that's right. You're the one with the sniffles right now. So you got to be real sick. careful. No. Yeah. I have a uh, three days of work. I'm in the middle of working uh late shift right now, but um, yeah, two more and then back to the pro athlete life. <laughs> so that, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty wild. So you work, do you work 12s? Eights. You work eights. Okay. So eights yeah. are eight, eights are a little bit better than twelves. That's good. Eights That's are good. manageable, yeah. Uh so my wife my wife uh just recently she spent the last year working in an ER, uh like a level one trauma center out here in, in okay. central Texas. But she was working twelves and it, the ER was like over an hour drive away each direction. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, so each day would end up being fifteen, almost sixteen hours oh, wow. with like all traffic and you know, being held late and never getting out on time, that sort of thing. So, uh, I cannot, I cannot imagine, you know, what it's like trying to train and recover and feed yourself well working in that setting. Like it just doesn't make yeah, any sense to me. That's a long day. <laughs> but for, even for you though, I mean, you're, you're talking about doing overnight shifts and doing eight hour shifts at a time. Like how do you even, how do you balance out being like hyper level performance and all that needs to be in place for that to actually continue with, you know, the fact that your real life is pulling you in a completely different direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I mean, it helps that I live close. Like I'm not sitting in traffic for an hour, which is nice. Uh, my gym's close to the hospital. So I kind of do, do, do. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I think just being disciplined and, you know, if I start work at 8 AM, like, yeah, I got to get up at five 30 to do that first session. And, automatically after work i'm i'm back to the gym like it's just routine like yeah it's just you, you got to do it if you want to be good right you can't yeah is there is there uh work. is there <laughs> is there kind of like in your head when you see like the other athletes like the professional 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 athletes who are like doing this full time do you look at them and you're like you're so soft you're you're so soft <laughs> you're like complaining about this like i i work 8 hours between my my shift or my, my training sessions sometimes, or I'll see like somebody's, um, social media, like recovering between sessions and they're lying there with their Theragun or whatever. And I'm like, I'm moving patients. And <laughs> sometimes I'm like, Oh, like that looks better. But yeah, you know, what? Like- it's, a, it's a good break too. like it, it breaks up my day. Um, and I think I'm the type of athlete that would overtrain if I didn't have work, like I would be training like three times a day because I wouldn't be doing anything else. Like, Oh, might as well work out again. Like more, more is better, but I know it's not, but I would still do it. (laughs) Yeah. That's funny. You're like, you, you, you get a, you get a, finally, you get a lunch break during the middle of your day. You like check Instagram for five minutes and you see someone sitting there with like those, those, uh, compression air boots on like all the way up to their quads, like upside down watching the office or something. You're just trying to eat your food. Yeah. You're like trying to eat between, you know, having to move patients and deal with like, you know what? Yeah. I could, I could see, I could see how that, that would build some mental toughness to be like, you know what, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you in the middle of these workouts. I'm going to get you next time we get there. Yeah. Like I'm going to go to physio <laughs> massage halfway through my day too, but <laughs> you know, but like things like working nights, 
like I, I hate working nights. Um, but again, yeah, just discipline, switch my day around. It really helped in Dubai because Dubai is 12 hour difference from here. So it was literally like I switched to night shift. So I was like, Oh, no problem. Like I got this. I'm used to this. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. Well, I mean, I really appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations on qualifying out of Wadapalooza. I mean, it was, it was a very, very intense competition. I can imagine there was yeah. some there was some like stressful sleepless nights involved over the course of that weekend. <laughs> yeah, and it all came down to basically that last event. So it was Yeah. It was a it nail was, biter yeah. all the way through. A little too close for comfort, but <laughs> <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah, you made it. That's what really matters. You made it. Yeah. Um uh, very cool. Well, I'll see you I'll see you in not too long, you know, a few days yeah. from now in uh, Montreal and uh I'll see you a week after that in Del Mar. And hopefully sometime in between there, you don't spread coronavirus to everybody. That'd be super cool of you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so I much, Emily. That. Yeah, I really appreciate it. We'll, we'll catch yeah, you later. Yeah, nice talking to you. Cheers. Likewise.